All right. So today we're going to move on with the burp suite uh, rooms and we're going to continue with the intruder one which says in previous rooms of this module we've covered the proxy and the repeater so we've seen the repeater yesterday if you have not completed these rooms uh, then you are advised to complete before you proceed this room will cover the third of primary modules intruder so in the meantime let me just fire up burp intruder allows us to automate requests which is very useful so we're going to start a temporary project with everything as default i've already started a private browsing window and I should also be connecting to their VPN, so to speak. Connect. All right, so again, Intruder allows us to automate requests, which is very useful when fuzzing and or brute forcing. We will be looking at how to use uh, Intruder to perform both of these functions in conjunction with the other tools that we have already covered. So let's start the machine. Deploy the machine, you should also deploy the attack box. I'm not because I'm using my own browser and my own burp suite. If you're not using the attack box, you can do so, blah, blah, blah. Let's just do that and say it's completed. All right. This should populate, so the lab underscore web URL should populate with burps um, with the IP address that we're actually dedicated for this one in a couple of seconds. Meanwhile, what is Intruder? Intruder is Burp Suites' inbuilt fuzzing tool. So let's actually look at it. It's over here near the proxy. I usually have it. So I have the repeater. I have the proxy, the repeater, the intruder, the decoder. I actually have after the intruder, after the repeater is authorized, then intruder, decoder, compare and so on and so forth so this is my actual setup so to speak we are left at intruder so we need to populate it with a little bit of web traffic here so intruder is burp suites is uh, inbuilt fuzzing tool so let's see if this has been populated so 10.10.104. .10 198 let's just copy it let's just paste it over here see if we are connected to the vpn appropriately hopefully we are takes a little longer than um than it should we're given a bad gateway so let's let's actually leave it a couple of moments is it HTTPS or HTTP? Either way, let's leave it a little bit of time and then we're going to go back into it. So again, what is Intruder? For example, by capturing a request containing a login attempt, we could then configure Intruder to swap out the username and password field for values from a word list. Now on this intruder topic i want to say that i mostly use it when i test when i'm testing login functionality and rate limiting issues or testing for rate limiting issues effectively allowing us to brute force uh, the login form similarly we could pass in fuzzing word lists and use intruder to fuzz for subdirectories endpoints or virtual hosts as well as for SQL injections, for example. This functionality is very similar to that provided by command line tools such as VFuzz or FUF, or others such as Derb, Derbuster, GoBuster, and so on and so forth. In short, as a method for automating requests, Intruder is extremely powerful. There is just one problem. To access the full speed of Intruder, we need Burp Professional, which is the one that I have. We can still use Intruder with Burp community, but it's heavily rate limiting, which is not good. So if you're a professional, if you're already working in cybersecurity as an app security professional or a penetration tester with a focus on web applications, this should be your first investment, in my opinion. So keep in mind that this is solely my opinion if i were to start over my first investment would be a license for burp professional of course if you're if you're working in network penetration testing that might not actually make the case 
for buying a license on the to uh, from the top of your head. But if you're in app security and your testing relies heavily using tools similar to Burp Suite or using proxies, web proxies, this should be your first investment. The speed restriction means that many hackers choose to use other tools for fuzzing and brute forcing. Of course, I don't do that when I'm doing app security testing. I want to have everything in one place. So I'm not using other tools. I'm just using Burp. When I'm doing recon or when I'm doing other stuff, when it comes to when I do have a little bit of time to test for bug bounties on Cinec, I use all other tools in uh, reconnaissance. Limitations aside, Intruder is still very useful, so it's well, well worth learning to use it properly. Let's see if our VPN is actually working. So it's working. Let's take a look at the Intruder interface. So the first view we get is a relatively sparse interface that allows us to choose our target. So let's go back to Burp Suite Intruder. To get started, send a request to Intruder from anywhere in Burp, of course. We are in the history. Let's actually send the 10.10. .10. Let's, let's look at the response here. Let's send uh, this one to Intruder or Control I. We have it over here. All right. Assuming that we sent a request, this should already be populated for us, of course. So we have the positions, we have the target over here. There are four uh, other intruder subtypes. So positions allows us to select an attack type. We are in the position, we have the payloads, the resource pool, the options, and I'm going to go in depth showing my experience in this and in the upcoming videos. So configuring the position, this is where you're being populated with the target. And of course, in here, sometimes when you just send something to the intruder, let's actually send some parameterized post request. Do we have any of that? We might not have a parameterized post request, but if we have a parameterized post request, intruder already suggests some positions where you would have the payload. For example, if this would be, so let's just send something to the repeater. Let's let's just control R, send this to the repeater. Let's actually say that get index.php page equals first. Let's actually post something in here say post username equals admin of course this is going to end up in a bogus response because i don't think there is such a thing for this host method not found and if we send this to the intruder with control i we'll see some things that i've already told you so we'll see that intruder fills or adds positions automatically where it thinks it's worth so for example, in this case, the page might be worth fuzzing as well as this body parameter, which is admin. So again, back in here, we have the positions, we have the payloads, which allows us to select values to insert into each of the positions with the find. We may choose to load items in from a word list. So we have the payloads, we have the position already. Let's say that we want to fuzz for page and then clear that one. We've cleared a, a We've actually cleared all of them. If we select auto, it's going to populate the ones it thinks it should populate. If we clear, let's just uh, do the page one here at the position. Then we select the payloads. So payloads, how these get inserted into the template depends on the attack type we choose in the position tab. There are many payload types to choose from. Anything from a simple word list to regex. So the ones are here. We can just add for from list which these lists are already populated in burp suite they come preloaded with burp suite 
So there are many payload types. The payload subtab also allows us to alter intruder's behavior with regards to payloads. For example, we can define a pre-processing rule to apply to each payload. Add a prefix or suffix, match and replace or skip if the payload matches a simple regex. So for example, let's just um, do a payload set. One simple list. We have a lot of types. When I do rate limiting on logins, for example, I just use the simple list and I do a little bit of resource pooling options, set custom. So let me just load one for, let's say, let's say directory short, short words, for example, let's say short words, 27,000. Let's, let's clear this and choose another one. Let's say passwords. We're going to actually payload passwords into page names. Regardless, payload processing, which is where you can define rules to perform pre-processing rules to perform on each of these payloads. For example, if I want to add a prefix to any of them or a suffix or whatever, I can define these rules. Now payload encoding, we can set, this is already automatically set. Resource pool is not particularly useful to us in Burp community, which is why I use it in Burp, uh, in Burp Professional. So I usually create a new resource pool, maximum concurrent requests, I will set it to 50, delay between requests. When I do test when there is some form of rate limiting imposed, I test with, for example, one request per second with 500. So maximum concurrent request is one with a delay between requests 500 milliseconds, which would be two uh, requests per second. I could do with I could do fixed or with random variation or increased delay in increments but I just start with the bare minimum and this would actually send two requests per second and this is often very sufficient to bypass a lot of rate limiting and it is also enough to have a sort of like common sense password or brute forcing strategy or a rate limiting bypass strategy it often I usually present it as a finding in a penetration testing report for a web application because if there are no other um, security measures imposed on the authentication such as multi-factor biometrics and so on and so forth this uh, this can make a case a good case for brute forcing of course probably uh, which is why I don't do bug bounties a lot this would not ever become valid in a bug bounty situation so that being said, we can just uh, start the attack and it's going to send about two requests per second, I believe. Yeah, it's choosing uh, the request delay. 500 milliseconds in between, so two re requests per second. Anyway, let me just stop this. So, pause or just terminate this, discard. So, as with most of the burp tools, Intruder allows us to configure attack behavior in the options sub-tab. Of course, there are multiple options to configure here, but in most circumstances, I do not use them, except when I'm doing very in-depth testing. These settings here apply primarily to how burp handles results and how burp handles the attack itself. For example, we can choose to flag requests that contain specified pieces of text or define how burp responds to redirects, which is really useful. We will take a closer look at some of these subtabs in the upcoming tasks. Fuzzing is when we take a set of uh, data and apply it to parameters to test functionality or if something exists. For example, we may choose to fuzz for endpoints. Of course, word goes here. In this situation, if you're using fuff, word goes here would be replaced with fuzz. Which section of the options subtab allows you to control what information will be captured in the intruder results? Attack results. Let's see. In which intruder subtab we can define attack type for our planned attack? So in the positions. All right. So that being said, in the next video, we're going to take an in-depth look 
at the positions at the intruder position sub tab which there's a lot to go and there's a lot to talk about intruders so be on the lookout for for future videos in this series and with that being said this video is over at 15 minutes